वेलकम एवरीबॉडी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट हाउ टू रीराइट मैक्सवेल्स इक्वेशन फॉर डिफरेंट मीडियम्स एंड डिफरेंट रीजियंस बेसिकली इन दिस वीडियो वी विल इंट्रोड्यूस यू विद डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ करंट इन इलेक्ट्रिकल कंपोनेंट्स एंड अप्लाई देम इन मैक्सवेल्स इक्वेशन एंड आल्सो वी विल लर्न हाउ टू रिड्यूस द वेरिएबल्स इन मैक्सवेल्स इक्वेशन यूजिंग constitutive law let us start with the general maxwell's equation for time bearing fields here i listed the maxwell's equation in the integral form and we uh, you see here we have electric variables like electric field e and d and magnetic field variables like b and h electric charge variable q and rho v electric current variables like i and id current density variables like j zd and zd is basically partial d over partial t so on this equation we have 10 variables so the purpose of today's lecture is to reduce some of these variable using constitutive law and also exploring the current terms so the current i might have different type or the current can be there can be different types of current available in electrical system in any electrical circuit we may have component like resistor vacuum tube capacitor current source and so on look at the figure at the bottom uh, right top right corner of this slide you will see we have some resistors in this circuit a uh, vacuum tube and capacitors so the current in the vacuum tube is called the conduction current in vacuum tube is called the convection current a conduction current is present in resistors and a displacement current in capacitors where the contribution of a source current is called the impressed current so these four types of current we already found here one is the conduction current convection current on displacement current and impressed or source current the figure at the bottom right corner shows the current densities here the source current has a density ji is called source current density or impressed current density jc is the current density in the resistor and zd is the current density in the capacitor called displacement current density so this video will introduce different types of current and elaborate the maxwell's equation with incorporating them this lecture will introduce different types of current and elaborate the maxwell's equation we also reduce electric fields and magnetic field variable applying constitutive law how electric and magnetic characteristics of a material affects the constitutive law will be discussed in this video we are going to categorize materials with their electrical and magnetic features in homogeneous isotropic and isotropic linear nonlinear and so on and finally the maxwell's equation will be tailored for a material with having a specific characteristic the current type actually affects the maxwell equation that derived from the ampere's law with considering a displacement current which states like a the circulation of magnetic field is equal to a current plus a displacement current the point form is of this equation is state like the curl of a is equal to a current density plus a displacement current density where the displacement current density is the partial d over partial t have a look to their respective frequency domain expression we are going to explore the current i and the current density j in detail here as we mentioned earlier there are four types of current conduction current that is available in resistor inductor or conductor and follow 
Ohm's law. Convection current is present in vacuum tube. Impressed source current can be found in current source. It could be a electromagnetic source like antenna or a lightning source for wind turbine and so on. Displacement current can be found in capacitor or in any dielectric material. The symbols of each type of current and their respective densities are shown in the table. Look at the table here. It listed all the current types with their symbol and the current densities. And also we find the relationship of current densities, the expression for current densities in time domain and in frequency domain. So there are four types of current conduction current, the symbol is I, we write conduct conduction, then convection current is I convection, impressed current is I, the suffix lowercase i, displacement current is I, suffix prefix I. Then their current densities is J conduction, J convection, J impressed and J D. And here J, the current density is basically ampere per meter square. And then the expression for conduction current density is Z conduction equal to sigma times E, that's the point form of Ohm's law. And Z convection is equal to the volume charge density times the speed of propagation. And Ji is the impressed current density or source current density. There is no known expression for source current density. And Zd is the displacement current that is the derivative time derivative of elliptic flux density and the respective frequency domain expression here you see in the frequency domain expressions we use suffix s to differentiate the time domain expression to differentiate them from the time domain expression and for the displacement current density the time derivative d over dt is replaced by j omega so if we ask you to write the expression of i in time domain with all possible currents that means you have to modify the maxwell's equation and write the expression like the current expression is i i the impressed current i conduction i convection plus i displacement or in frequency domain you can write it like isi plus is conduction plus is convection plus is displacement we might ask you to write the current density expressions for with possible types of current densities that means you have to write the expression in the point form with current densities or in the integral form with a surface integration and here you see the current densities are j i in time domain and j conduction j convection and j displacement and their respective expressions j conduction must be replaced with sigma times e and j convection with rho v times u and j displacement with d uh, derivative of time derivative of d and their respective frequency domain expressions are also shown on this slide. Now we rewrite the general Maxwell's equation in the point form with all possible types of current densities. So here you see in the frequency domain expression, the first expression is as it was in the general form. The second expression, I replace the current term with impressed current density, then conduction current density convection current density and the displacement current density and also I replace the, those current densities with their respective expression and the other two equations the remain same as we obtained for general Maxwell's equation. So the la left blow, uh, box shows the frequency domain expression and the right box shows the time domain expressions. I recommend you practice this for La, uh, integral form too. So integral form of Maxwell's equation with considering all possible types of current both in frequency domain and in time domain. As we found the all current components in the Maxwell's equation, now we need to apply uh, the characteristics of the system to reduce or eliminate some, ty some types of current. So as you see we have conduction current that is current in a solid conductor like a resistor, inductor or 
in the transmission lines this type of current is present that is called conduction current so i write i conduction and this star this this part of this current will be zero for lossless medium as you see the conduction current is sigma times e for lossless medium sigma is the loss component sigma is all about sigma is the resistivity and resistance makes the system lossy so if resistance is zero sigma will be infinity and sigma times e will be zero because if sigma is infinity then e should be very small and this term goes to zero so for lossless medium sigma times e becomes zero and for convection current as you see the convection current is uh, av available in vacuum tube the common example is crt display and uh, these types of current will be zero for source free and charge free medium if the medium is source free and charge free source free means there is no charge source and charge free means there is no charge source so source free and charge free means there is no rho v there is no free electrons and there is no charge so you see here for source free or charge free medium the convection current density will be zero the convection current basically a types of current where you see you heat up the cathode and if the heat is sufficiently enough the cathode will release electron and this electron will attract or pulled by the anode and a current will follow through this system through this tube this type of current is called the convection current and this current basically is the current produced by charge so if there is no charge then this current will be zero or if there is no source then this current will be zero and the displacement current is the current because of the polarization of the dielectric substance or producing the flux when we charge up a capacitor then it will if you connect a capacitor with the external source it will accumulate positive and negative charge and the flux line will establish and this flux line contributes to a current that is called displacement current and this type is of current is always available so you have to keep the displacement current in your Maxwell's equation for all the time and if you have a current source that could produce a different types of current that is called impressed current it might originate from the antenna if you have antenna electromagnetic source as a part of your circuit or a current source as a part of your circuit or a lightning current for the wind turbine case you have to introduce impressed current and this current will be zero if the medium or system is source free so here we came up with this conclusion that the conduction current will be zero for lossless medium and the convection current will be zero for source free or charge free medium and the impressed current will be zero for source free medium so if you if we mention the medium characteristics like loss free and source free that meaning that your conduction current is zero because it is lossless and as it is source free so your impressed current will be zero and convection current will be zero not only that it also affects the Maxwell's equation that derived from the Gauss, Gauss law. Maxwell's equation that derives from the Gauss law says divergence of D equal to rho V. So as the system is charge free, then the rho V will be zero. The divergence of D will be zero. So the source free basically affect the Maxwell's equation derived from the Biot-Sebert law or Ampere's law and also it affects the Maxwell's equation that derived from Gauss law. As you see here, I sum up or conclude uh, the detail what happens if the system is charge free. So if the system is charge free, there will be no convection current because rho v is zero and it will affect the Gauss law too. And 
the pursuers free region the convection current is zero and the impressed current is zero so that will affect the ampere's law and also the gauss law and loss free region there will be no conduction current uh, loss sigma e will be zero so for con there will be no conduction current for loss less medium and also for free space or vacuum or air is a charge free source free and loss free medium so if we ask you to write the maxwell's equation for free space or you have to assume that your medium is charge free source free and loss free so if we ask you to write Maxwell's equation for free space, meaning that you have to write the Maxwell's equation for a system that is charge free, source free and loss free. So now we reduce EM variables with constitutive law. So as you see the constitutive law is the relation between electric flux, density and electric field and also the relation between magnetic flux density and magnetic field. So the relation is d equal to epsilon e, where epsilon equal to epsilon naught times epsilon r. Epsilon naught is the absolute permittivity and epsilon r is the relative permittivity. For free space or for air, the relative permittivity is 1. And similarly, mu is equal to mu naught and mu r mu naught is the absolute permeability and mu r is relative permeability. Mu r is equal to 1 for free space and also for non-magnetic materials. And we also write down the constitutive relationship in frequency domain on the table. So now based on the medium's electric and magnetic characteristics, the constitutive law could be different. I categorize medium in two, two types. One is the vacuum or free space or air that is no medium. So medium is free space or vacuum that has the constant epsilon naught and mu naught. And another is if the medium is filled with some material. This type of material could be linear or nonlinear homogeneous or inhomogeneous or non-homogeneous, isotropic or anisotropic. So we need to explain what is linear medium, inductor, capacitor, they are linear component. So if you apply voltage or current, their characteristics will change linearly. And for non-linear medium is epsilon and mu are not linear, so they are function of external field. So if we apply different voltage or current, then you will get different response. Nonlinear material, nonlinear material doesn't follow Ohm's law. Then the homogeneous medium, if the medium constant epsilon and mu are constants, the electric and magnetic characteristics are constant, they are not function to the space. So everywhere if the epsilon and mu are same, that is called homogeneous medium. But if uh, the electric and magnetic characteristics of the material is not uniform everywhere, that is called non-homogeneous or inhomogeneous material. And for isotropic medium, epsilons and mu are scalar. That means the speed of field propagation is same in all directions. For uh, isotropic medium, if you change the polarity of the external voltage or external source, the electrical characteristics will remain same. That is called isotropic. And anisotropic if the speed of propagation is not same in all directions. Let me give an anal analogy like this. Like if you swim in a in upstream, your speed will be different while swimming in the downstream. So in downstream, your speed of swimming will be higher than Sleeping, uh, swimming in the upstream. So the water may be homogeneous, but it is not isotropic. Now let us uh, sum up uh, the concepts that we learned here. So how medium and region characteristics affect Maxwell's equation. A linear medium, we cannot show the linearity in Maxwell's equation. So you don't need to do anything 
while writing Maxwell's equation for linear or non-linear medium. Then isotropic, so we don't put vector sign on the medium constant because they are a scalar. So just leave epsilon and mu as a scalar term, not a vector. And homogeneous medium, so for homogeneity, to show the homogeneity in your equation, you have to replace B with mu s and D with epsilon E and bring mu and epsilon out of the del operator as they are not function of space. So if you have a del operator before mu and epsilon, you can take mu and epsilon out from the del operator because mu and epsilon are constant. So you don't need to take the derivative of this. And for charge free region, you have to remove all the rho v terms from the Maxwell's equation. Uh, and for source free regions, you have to remove the terms with j i impressed current and rho v. For loss free or lossless medium, you have to remove the term with sigma. Now look at an example of PN junction diode. So PN junction diode, if you see the internal charge distribution of a PN junction, it has P region, N region, and a depletion region. And if you also observe the current voltage characteristics of PN junction, you can easily conclude that the PN junction diode is a nonlinear, inhomogeneous, and anisotropic medium. It is nonlinear because any voltage below the knee voltage, the voltage current characteristics, so if you increase or decrease, the voltage, the current doesn't change uh, as a linear function and it is uh, inhomogeneous because the carrier, charge carrier distribution is not same throughout the material. So they are function of a space. So they are not uniform. So the diode is non-homogeneous. A diode is an isotropic medium because if you change the polarity, in forward region, you see the VI characteristics is different from the reverse region. So if you apply reverse voltage, the characteristics will be completely different from the forward voltage region. So a PN junction diode is a nonlinear, non-homogeneous and anisotropic medium. Now we rewrite the general Maxwell's equation with constitutive law. So we just replace the B and D using mu s and epsilon e respectively. So if you see the equation, we first equation we replace B with mu s and second equation we replace D with epsilon e and third equation we replace D with epsilon e and fourth equation B with mu s. You also can uh, rewrite the Maxwell's equation with respect to D and B. For that case, you have to uh, replace E and S with D over mu and sorry D over epsilon and B over mu. Now we have to write the Maxwell's equation for linear isotropic homogeneous source free region. So as I mentioned before linearity we cannot show on the expression. So skip this isotropic just don't put vector sign over mu and epsilon for homogeneous. So for homogeneous, you have to move mu and epsilon to the left of the del operator. And for source free, so for source free, you have uh, uh, the impressed current and the convection current will be zero. Also the rho v is zero. So let's see how we can reflect these characteristics on Maxwell's equation. So at first equation, I replace B with mu S. In the second equation, we have impressed current. I set impressed current to zero. We have conduction current density, sigma ES. I keep it. We have convection current, rho V times U. As rho V is zero because it is source free. So I make the convection current zero and the displacement current j omega ds. So I replace the d with epsilon e. And the third equation that was basically divergence of d equal to rho v. Here I put d equal to epsilon e and I 
bring the epsilon at the left and right hand side becomes 0 because rho v is 0. So, the final expression is divergence of E s equal to 0. So, I divide the entire equation with epsilon because epsilon is constant and you can easily remove this epsilon and for similarly for the fourth equation, the fourth equation you see divergence of B s was 0, but here B equal to mu s and mu is constant. So, I can take mu at the left of this expression and eventually drop this from the equation. So, this uh, we got the Maxwell's equation, modified Maxwell's equation or for linear isotropic homogeneous source free region is listed in first box. And the second box we have linear isotropic homogeneous and charge free. So, here instead of source free we have charge free. In source free we have uh, impressed current 0, but for charge free we do not say there is no source, we say we could say there is no charge. So, rho v will be 0, but not the impressed uh, source current is 0, but charge is 0. So, we write down the Maxwell's equation. The first equation is remain same. The second equation you see we have the impressed current density present in this equation. In comparing to the first box and second box has impressed current density because it is not charge, uh, it is not source free, it is only charge free. So, charge free there is no convection current and the third expression is same like the source free because there is rho v equal to 0 and this is homogeneous. So, both of them are homogeneous so, and charge free. So, third equation and fourth equation are same. So, the only difference between source free and charge free is in source free we do not have impressed current density, but for charge free we might have impressed current density term. So, in this slide we show the Maxwell's equation in the point form for linear isotropic homogeneous and loss free. So, you see here now we have loss free, not source free or charge free, only loss free. So, loss free means there will be no sigma term. So, you see the second equation we do not have sigma here and for third equation you see the change in the third equation too. So, in this case there is uh, rho v is not 0 because it is not <coughs> source free or charge free. So, rho v is there and epsilon I put it is homogeneous. So, I took the epsilon to the left and the divide the entire expression with epsilon. So, you get divergence of E s equal to rho v s over epsilon. Fourth equation is uh, same like to the previous expressions because it is right hand side is 0. So, you can easily divide the entire equation with mu and drop mu from this, but unlike from the fourth equation you cannot drop epsilon from the third one because the right hand side of third equation is not 0. Now, the Maxwell's equation for linear homogene isotropic homogeneous charge free and loss free or lossless. So, as it is charge free rho v will be 0, it is loss free so conduction current will be 0. So, you see we remove the conduction term from the second equation and the rho v term from the second and third equation and also we remove the epsilon and mu from sec third and fourth equation because the system is homogeneous and charge free. And for linear isotropic source free region. So, it is source free, but not lossless. So, there should be conduction current, but it is source free. So, no impressed current and no uh, charge current, but it is not homogeneous. So, as it is not homogeneous, I could not take epsilon to the left. So, in the third equation, I cannot take epsilon to the left because the medium is not uh, homogeneous, no idea or clue about the homogeneity of the medium. So, I keep it here, I keep the epsilon 
inside the Dell operator. I keep the mu inside the Dell operator because the medium may be homogeneous or non-homogeneous. So it is not clear. That's why I could not make a decision here and cannot remove epsilon or mu from this two expressions. So, you, I recommend you practice this type of this questions here on the test or also in the assignments. I might ask you to write the Maxwell's equation considering these features or electric and magnetic characteristics.